see how you've done at the end of this first part. Um, Today, we're going to do the last thing, the last new thing in the course, the last time we will use for summary and exam and different things. Um, there is one important thing in a basic stats class that we are lacking, and that is the analysis of proportions or the analysis of count data, the analysis of categorical data. Remember, in the beginning, we had the discrete distributions, then the continuous distributions, and then we went on to continuous quantitative type measurement data. We've spent most of the course talking about that means, variances, regression, analysis of variance. That's what we've been doing. Now we are going back to proportions, where we count things, like in the discrete binomial world. There are a number of stories on uh, my Website here, let me see, wouldn't it maybe be nicer like this? Is that nicer? Then you at least see this and not me as much, that's nice I guess. Um, are we okay kind of? Good. Um, it's linked to for instance polls, like you made polls to ask people what would you like to vote for in the coming for instance presidential election in the US. There is a little story about that if you're interested. It could also be some of these percentages that newspapers often bring to us. For instance, a couple of years ago, Julian's Posten, I believe, had this story about students do not prepare for teaching. University students, at least in the eyes of the teachers. So, so many teachers thought that was the case. I'm going to teach you today how to be a bit careful whenever someone is presenting you with a percentage, which is the same as a proportion, right? That's what a proportion is, that's a percentage. The story I will dig into is this one. It's a report from the Danish institution called Sundhedsstyrelsen, the health uh, institution. It's about malformations of newborns in Denmark. It's a long report. I'm going to dwell on this plot. Because that's what I will teach you within 10 minutes from now to make this plot. Um, it says the proportion, sorry for the Danish, but I'll translate. It says proportion of newborns alive with malformations right, among newborns in Denmark. So it's about four to five percent of all newborns. I'm sorry, that's how it is. It's not a perfect world we are in. Um, that includes all levels of uh, malformations though, from small ones that many of us live with to more serious ones that fewer live with. Um, and 95% confidence interval for such proportions. And there are 12 proportions here, one for 1994, one from 1995, and so on and so forth. So what have we done? We have looked at all the newborns in Denmark, which was 30, 40,000, 70,000. I don't remember the number. We can have a look at that later. But then we have counted that in 1994, 2,910 living newborns had malformations in Denmark corresponding to a percentage of 4.18. This is per mil. So percentage 4.18. Then we have the percentages as we go along over the years. The question we could ask ourselves, before we start throwing billions towards this area, we maybe should ask ourselves, do we have a real thing going on here? That is, do we really have an increase? of this number over these years? Or is it, could it be explained due to pure randomness? Right, because what's going on? I have 30,000 births each year. Each of those births, that's like a random, that's a binary thing. So it's like throwing the dice, right? Either you're okay or you're not okay, according to this definition of being okay, right? And then you count. So it's, it's a binomial distribution. When we look at this real life phenomenon, which is about looking at 
proportions of newborns with malformations. That real life phenomenon behaves like a binomial distribution. So if we want to be intelligent in studying those numbers, we should bear with us, have in our brains the binomial distribution when we look at these numbers to know what is the distinction between randomness and real signal, right? That's important for an intelligent use of such data. I'm going to give you the tools to do that today. And the plan looks like this. The intro, I'm in the middle of. I've al almost done it. However, just a little perspective before we real jump into it. Um, looking back, I've mentioned it already, we have previously in the course been focusing on quantitative data to a high extent, right? We have done hypothesis test and confidence intervals for a single mean, for two means, and then for several means. That's basically what we've done, right? Most of the time in the course, one sample, two sample, pairs, k samples, k sample blocked, and then re regression also, but uh, that's not mentioned here. It's just to make the link of what will go on today in a single lecture. We will do all those things, similar way of thinking, but now applied to proportions, percentages. We are going to do one proportion. We're going to compare two proportions. We're going to compare several proportions. One sample, two sample, k sample. And then, actually, we're going to take one more step. Since it may not, it may be more than just a binary thing. It also is in Son Hesturson's report. It's not only actually uh, whether you have a malformation or not. You can actually distinguish between the level. Is it, a, is it a mild malformation or is it a serious malformation, right? Or no malformation. That makes three categories, not only two. So it's not binary, it's trinary. We are going to be able to deal with that also today. Hey, we have a busy morning in front of us. So let's get on with it. Proportions. It's not too difficult, right? It's just counting the number of times something happens, dividing by the total n, and we have an estimate of a proportion. So that was the first part, just getting started. 